I mean, uh, what was it? It's in Indianapolis. You were with um, with Jay, right? T Street. Yeah, I saw. I saw oh, yeah, Mike T-string. Williams. Saw T Street, and then I met some people that followed the channel that didn't want to get on the camera and stuff like that. Man, it was <laughs> it was crazy, man. It was crazy, but. I'm back and glad to be back. Um, we're going to make this thing happen. And I want to shout out all my people that came and waited for us. Support Game and Tressa C. Arlene. I knew Tressa was going to come because I put a picture of her boy up there, T Strings, on, Insta- on, on the IG. So I knew she was going to come and give me some hell. Tim Windsor, my brother from another, been following us for a hot minute. D Weave. And look who done came. Oh, man. He done Hi, came yeah. through. It's it's the good it's a good sister Muchella. How you doing, Muchi? All right, are we live? We Big live. Mucciarella. We on the air? Are we on the air? Are we, we on the air? <laughs> we we on the air. We on the air. <laughs> yeah, man, we all back in the house, and we got one more person coming. But before she get here, she always comes fashionably late. Y'all new favorite to go with Muchella. Miss K is going to be joining us in a minute. But look. D Weave done came through with the the nine ninety nine super chat. D Weave, D Weave, <laughs> brother, this is for you, my brother, because I am very grateful. What a money reside, what a money reside, what a money reside, what a money reside. Okay, baby, let me tell you something. If a whore ain't paying y'all bills, that's the last thing y'all should be worried about. <laughs> oh, not this dude. This dude that found his way over here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah, he done found his way over here, man. That's the remix version. <laughs> that is the remix. And he's got that hair popping too, boy. Yeah, man. Um, so uh like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I went away for a couple of weeks trying to reflect, trying to do some digging, doing some homework. I encourage everybody to get them life gains and just go travel, get outside your comfort zone. Because it gives you an opportunity to reflect on where you've come from and where you want to go and set goals. And so this was the first time my daughter has been on the road because of COVID. So she got to see her great grandmother, her grandmother, her auntie. And um, I got to see a whole lot of people that I didn't even know follow my channel and enjoy the content I put out. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful you guys came back and y'all spending some time with us. But, you know, we're going to make it do what it do. It's time to get into it. So one more, <laughs> one more program note for everybody that follows me for financial information. And some of y'all been cussing me the hell out because I haven't been putting it on this channel. This week, I officially start putting out content on my other channel, The Life Game Reviews. Link is in the description. I'm going to be talking about hot stocks you should buy this week. I'm talking about the market might be crashing because a lot of the big boys is buying up physical gold. And what does that indicate? Something about some inflation. So we got that going. Um, Bitcoin going through the roof. People hedging their bets with that. And I also found a website for those of you that love to do side hustles. I found a website that will give you $15,000 line of credit so that you can buy merchandise on their website, wholesale, and then sell it retail. And I'm talking luxury watches, diamond earrings. Be sure to go check out my other channel because I'll be dropping all that on you this week. And check out who sent Tressa C done came through. Here's some (laughs) gas money. Gas money. She knows you have a Tesla. She got one too. Um, Yeah, yeah, Tressa got a Tesla too. Right, right. So Tressa sending this $5 because she saw her boy T Streams who wanted me to (laughs) let y'all know he's doing well. He misses y'all. He'll be getting back up here in a little bit. But uh, Tressa C, this is for you. Don't you like popsicles? What? I said, don't you like popsicles? What? I said, don't you like popsicles? Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) That's for you, my friend. Uh, So without further ado, let's get into it. We're talking the godfather of Harlem, my people. Probably one of the best top three shows that is out right now by far. Writing is good. Acting is good. Narrative is good. Everything is good. The score is good. One of the best intro songs out there right now. And we're going to dive into it. So one scene that took me by surprise, and y'all know I haven't wanted to see this. That damn Estelle is kissing up on Ernie. 
Take a look at this mm. mess, man. Hurt my feelings. Damn, Stella. He's the only way to keep your father off my back. He's still mad about Benny. Every time I turn around, I think he's going to put one in the back of my fucking head. He won't. You don't want to see each other. I make my own decisions. Break it up! The FBI! Heads up! All right, fellas, you got me. Call my lawyer. Stella so, Gigante, we have a warrant for your arrest. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, well, what, Moochie? What? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, okay, okay. My, um, <laughs> I, I'm having a little green screen difficulty. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. We know how you roll, Moochie. You I'm like coming. the. You like to be halfway naked on the screen getting that only fan page money. Season. We know how you roll. You, you better get you... it in quick since OnlyFans is, is cutting off all the adult stuff. I know, man. <laughs> hey. But anyway, let's just start this thing from the beginning. Shouts out to everybody that has came through to check us out. We got 42 in the building. Please give me 42 likes. Shout your boy out. So, Larry, let's just take this from the top. Let's do it. We got we got old Frenchy man here. Old Frenchy man. He done <laughs> sat there and he done double crossed our boy Bumpy in favor of Bonanno to start this episode out. We begin this episode where Bumpy is thinking he's gonna get this connection. Next thing you know, Bonanno roll up on him. Larry, take the wheel from the beginning. Talk about that. Yeah, that's uh this this episode, man, it had some it had some rides on there as far as who was gonna have who was gonna be aligned with who and everybody was sort of shifting positions and you know it, the only thing that I found I mean I don't want to give too much away but I'm sure we've all seen it at this point I felt like the storyline with Bonanno and the families was a little predictable because we knew that they weren't that he was gonna be able to do that and but just see it wasn't sure I just wasn't sure how it was gonna play out but mm. I have to say that I, I really am liking this storyline that they have with what's his name, Mansoor ninety eight. No, oh, uh, Lord, there I, you go. I, <laughs> I Look, love, you I love the storyline. Uh huh. I said you got his name, right? Yeah, I, I, I like the story. I like the storyline with him, and um, and the way Bumpy's going. So, <clears throat> I just I think it's um, I don't know. How to it's just it's it's sort of like it's showing. It, I mean. Not to, I mean, Bumpy's such a well-developed character already. It's not like they need to develop him that much more. But it was so, it was so nice to see how he was just not, he wasn't taking life lightheartedly. He wasn't frivolous about taking someone's life, even mm -hmm. when he had to do it. It just like, like this dude. He was like, if you want to go, go. I'm not gonna, you know, I don't know. I'm probably running ahead, but yeah, anyway, my bad. Ooh, ooh. Got your <laughs> track shoes on. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> you know, you know, Larry coined the phrase "reekbox." <laughs> so, so you know how you do Mucho jump on in there that, that opening scene what you think I feel like Monsoor 98 did a real bird move but he was, yeah. he was scared so now I, you know I understand I knew he was scared though when mm -hmm. he ran to them in the last episode mm -hmm. yeah um, while I was gone I had the privilege to see the episode prior to this when Bumpy came up with a plan to take out all the black dudes, crabs in a damn barrel. I mean, come on, man. What the hell? Yeah. Man? This brother come up with a plan to excommunicate the Anglo Italians, and y'all gonna try to stab the man in the back. But did, do y'all not remember when we reviewed episode one, when they introduced Meth McClain's character? Mm -hmm. Didn't I tell y'all he was gonna double cross this? Didn't I said it from the beginning? I said it from the beginning. He was going to double cross him, and he did. But getting you know, back to you know what bothered me about that is like he's saying, <clears throat> you know, um, Method Man's character was saying, "Oh, he wanted he was doing this because he wanted to be the big boss," and I'm like, "But you realize you're just swapping out Bumpy for the Italians. You're never going to be the big boss. Nope. You know, you're going to mm -hmm. all it is is you are going to work with Bumpy or or be he was talking about there's going to be 10 Harlems and you can say that he was going to work for Bumpy or all of them would be somewhat working for Bumpy, but they're still going to run their own cities. But now if you go work with the Italians, you're just going to end up working for the Italians. You're not going to be a big boss. And that's the thing I understand. It's like, why, why would you throw your own people away so that you can what be the the he wanted to be the HNIC. 
but he wasn't going to be. That's the whole thing. In he was his eyes, he saw it that way. He was no, just Even though the Italians are in charge of me, I'm going to be the HNIC. But basically, but all, he, all he was doing <laughs> was positioning himself to be a house nigga. That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, but in his eyes, he still didn't see it that way. He couldn't even see the forest past the trees. He nope. couldn't see Bumpy's vision. Mm -mm. That was all his he problem. Was all he was doing was trying to be the leader of the black people. Mm -hmm. He was his mind was so closed, you would have to build a house around it. His, exactly. his ass couldn't see Bumpy's vision to take out the people that actually hate you and call you a nigga. He exactly. wanted to shuck and jive for them, but we digress a little bit because we can do that because we back and we're trying to give y'all that energy. <laughs> so Moochie, I'm gonna come with you on this one next, and we're gonna bounce around a little bit here. So you know, I don't mind if the track shoes is on a little bit tonight. We're gonna bounce around. All right. So we we got the opening scene, and from that opening scene, Bumpy was clearly frustrated. He was dejected. He was drinking. Um, you know, he actually kind of disrespected this fine wife of his. That's for you, Larry. Disrespected her a little bit, got on her bad side. You can leave her up there for a little bit longer if you want. Well, I'm I'm gonna come back to her. <laughs> but did you did Mucha, did you get the feeling that in Bumpy's disgust, his anguish, that his right, his day one right here was starting to feel that Bumpy was slipping because he gave him a, a in a, a great speech of like Bumpy, you need to get back on your horse. Take the wheel, Moochie. He felt defeated. Because he didn't want to kill, he didn't want to kill those black men. Mm -hmm. Those was his brothers, as far as he was concerned. The way he wanted to set things up, so he did not want to kill. He did not want to kill them. And, and Willow, you're right. He is slimy, like how he was in um the wire when he played cheese. He was he was slimy like that too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Method Man gonna be tight cast. I mean, anywhere he go, we're going to know he's going to double cross somebody. He keep this mess up. He keep yeah. it up. And let me give you a little thank you for that um, $10 super chat, man. Y'all coming through tonight, man. I like it. I'm, I'm serious, man. Let me give you something in the lines of, uh, how about this? What you taking my picture for? <laughs> Who are you going to show it to? <laughs> they say, I got a picture of Richard Pryor. He gives a fuck. <laughs> I appreciate that. And if you want to have a picture of me, just follow me on the gram. So now, Larry, I'm about to come back to you, Larry. I'm going to come back to you on this one. Uh, I, I just can't resist this story. I, I, let, let me just go ahead and get this out of Talk to me about Estelle and Ernie. So let's, let's just break this down for the people. So first of all, Chin done killed another one of his made men because his made men knew what was going on with Ernie, Benny, and his daughter. All right. Yeah. So now Ernie's a made man. OK, <clears throat> he specifically tells Ernie, hands off my daughter. Yeah, specifically. And what the hell happens? She comes give that man the kiss of death. And like Kobe James said, all you got to do to get Stella draws is get on the daddy bad side. Larry. <laughs> so they get kissed and your boy, your boy who has played in several, several things. DA is on Stella Heim parts, mean like a mosquito in heat. He own her. And he is trying to get her to turn on Chin, but he, she's like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. So to make this long story short, they pop up in his office. He drug in, his, he drug in Chin's brother. Chin's brother basically was about to crack. But then Chen's brother come up with this wonderful scheme, Larry. I mean, wonderful scheme. Send Stella and Ernie back in there. <clears throat> pretend like Ernie's the boyfriend. Two steps out the door, they getting married. Take it away, my brother Larry. I love that. I like that part, I mean, <laughs> but I don't like this relationship. Hell no. Ernie's going to die. I don't, I don't like the relationship either because Stella is sort of like a black widow. It's just like yep. everybody around her just keeps on popping up dead. Mm -hmm. But... I will say this, as far as as far as far Ernie, this probably was, <clears throat> I think he's going to die. I don't think it's going to be from Chin, but this probably protected him from Chin because there's no way that he's going to kill his daughter's husband. So he doesn't like it, and he, he wasn't liking it before when he was, he told him to stay away from you, and he said, he clearly said, 
The only reason why I'm not killing you is because Stella has feelings for you. And I now that they've got he said I thought he um, said Stella loves you. But loves you feelings. So, okay, whichever I'm not maybe at the language wrong, but I that's the only reason why he had, you know, Chan wasn't killing him. And now I think that if if they come to him and they tell him, hey, we got married, this is the reason why, because the feds are trying to are trying to get Stella to, to testify against you. They're trying to get me to testify, whatever. Now we can't testify against each other. We were I, we did this not to just protect you, but to protect the family, to protect your daughter, all of this. So I, I think he's I think Chen's going to be mad. He might beat the crap out of him because that's what Chen does. He lashes out violently because he's a brute. But I think ultimately Chen is still a thinker. And that's one of the reasons why mm-hmm. people – Chen, that's what – I mean, he is. He, he, he may not be the, the, the traditional strategist like Bumpy, but he has been able to navigate his way through this family and rise to the head of a family because he, he's able to think his way through stuff. And I just think he's – I think he's going to be mad at Ernie, and then I think he's going to accept the inevitable. Hmm. Okay. Mooch, <laughs> I'm going to have you jump in there on that same subject, but I just got to say I disagree with Larry – I could easily see them having Chen knock off Ernie, which is going to push Stella over the top to testify against her daddy. Take it away, Mooch. I'm clutching my pearls right now with what Larry was saying. Oh, Lord. Now, y'all know Michael <laughs> oh. Colby killed his own brother-in-law. Yeah. After, ba- after, after the baptism, he stood godfather to the child. You lousy, cold-hearted bastard. Remember she said all of that? Anywho, I think when he find out that they marry, he gonna hit the ceiling, y'all. Oh man, he gonna hit the ceiling. But I feel like Stella got her father wrapped around her finger. She do. She and Mucci, she's do you defuse the situation? Mucci, do you remember when I said in episode one that the most dangerous character on this show is a stale? Exactly. Yeah. I'm just. Gonna- but when, but you know, when his brother comes to him, when, when, uh, when father, uh, what's his last name again? Gigante. Gigante. Yeah. When father Gigante goes and tells his brother, look, they did this because I told them to do it. Mm-hmm. That this wasn't their idea. This was my idea. I don't think that Chen, I think Chen's going to be mad at a lot of people, but I don't think he's going to take it out on Ernie because I think he's going to realize Ernie did something to help protect his child. I feel like he's a. He, I feel like him. the plot, the the, the, the the brother's gonna be the buffer with it too. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna be the person that diffuses the situation also. But Stella and Ernie, them two gonna be like Batman and Robin doing stuff. I'm telling you, especially <laughs> she can pissed off with her father anymore. So so basically, what you're saying is Stella is Batman and Ernie's gonna be Little Robin. That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Look, they both pulling trick. They both pulling cock and hammers and pulling them. Right? Look, okay? l- let me tell you something, Moochie. Ernie ain't even got the damn draws yet, and he killing people for this girl. Look, he got to whistle him though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> man, oh, man, like like Larry said, she's Black Widow. You get a whip of them draws, you might smell onions and. Sour cream. You don't want none I of that. I feel like the father, especially if she, somebody just said it in the comments, Fresh Prince of ATL, don't let Stella get pregnant. If she get pregnant, um, Jacante's going to be like a marshmallow in her hand because that's what he wants. He wants a, a, the traditional Italian family. Right. But also, mm-hmm. let's remember, he can't just kill, he just can't kill Ernie right now. Like, he could, I mean, he He's could. He's not going to kill him. He's an Ernie. I mean, here's the thing. Ernie, Ernie is a made man now, and so he's going to need permission before he can kill him. I know that he can. Technically, he can just kill him because hey. he's done that before. <laughs> but if he just Hi, kills him, he's going to have – there's going to be a on. lot of things. There's going to be a lot of questions that need to get answered. Er, if he just kills Ernie, that will be the third made man and oh, and Chen's crew that has gotten killed without permission in a very short period of time. People are going to start thinking maybe this dude's got to go. He can't handle his own family. So, Larry, I, I, thought, down on him, though. I thought this too, Larry. I thought this too, um, and I didn't look it up. Ron Mitchell saying the U.S. attorney was wrong. Any confession to your clergy, no matter where it is, is done 
is inadmissible. Larry, you 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 a legal family? Um, yeah. what that, you that, know about that? that it, it's it is true that any confession, like it does not have to be confined to the confessional booth. The the idea of the confessional is is a is more of an idea of you can be in a car, you can be in a jail. Because for instance, they have priests that go and they take confessions at prisons. You mm -hmm. can't say that it's not a legitimate confession because you didn't allow the guy out to go to the local Catholic church and sit in the confessional booth. So confessions could be anywhere, but that wasn't litigated until later. So okay. what he was saying was probably accurate for that time. But okay. okay, okay, gotcha. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the superstar, Miss K is in the building. <laughs> Her link is in the description. She got the hair all crinkled. She got the 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 little Carolina blue eye eye shiner stuff on, <laughs> looking right to come talk to y'all about Godfather of Harlem. Come on, Ms. stop K. playing. Miss K, playing. how you doing? Just like her shirt. Stop playing. No. <laughs> oh, y'all. I think you're on mute. Uh oh. I think uh -oh. she is on mute. Yeah. I oh no, she just went on mute. <laughs> you, you, there you go. There you go. There you go. It's because I was trying to use my um my little Yeti, and I guess I don't know how to use it. So, oh, well, <laughs> you, 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 you're loud and clear now. So, um, Miss K, we was just doing the rundown on the stale Ernie situation. Tell mm -hmm. us how you feel about that whole thing. You can go anywhere you want with the story. We covering the whole thing. Mm, I heard some of the stuff you guys were saying. I was watching while I was trying to get ready. Hold on, is that me? Is that is? Am I the reason there's an echo? Yeah, me, turn turn down. Um, what turn your mic down. Yeah. A little. Your volume, I think. Uh, I don't know if I know how to do that. Uh oh, sorry guys. Oh, you good? Take your time. This um, is this is a place of learning. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Try, see if you can just turn down the volume on your computer a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, folks. Are you good? Is it? Can can you hear me still? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's still an echo. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Do you have earphones? Yeah, I took them out though because it was just not working out for me. All okay. right. Can you All hear right. me go anyway? Yep. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, um, what you guys were talking about with Stella and Ernie, I just. I don't know. Like I heard you guys saying she's like a black widow and that is, I feel like that's definitely true. <laughs> um, Lorenzo's dead because of her. Um, Teddy's dead because of her. Mm -hmm. And you know, it seems like it's only a matter of time that it will happen to Ernie, but I don't, I don't necessarily see that happen. I feel like it's a possibility, but I don't necessarily see it. Mm -hmm. um, but we saw that Chin did warn him like, don't, Touch my daughter, or else I'm gonna take a sword to your bones. Like, right. I feel like he's a little sick, though. You know, like he wants his daughter. Like that's disgusting. Ooh, Ooh yeah, you, you don't you, want you, nobody to have her. Right. That's why I'm saying that's well, kind she's of supposed gross. to live her life. Right. Y'all feel like he owned that Donald Trump? He want to sleep with his his daughter? I don't know daughter? about all of that, but it's right. just weird. Uh, yeah. I don't want to think <laughs> about that. It's really weird. It's just weird. I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of really all I gotta say about that. I just mm -hmm. think it's really weird how he wants to kill everybody that comes next to his daughter sexually. Mm, 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 you know mm. what I think I like, y'all? Mm. I think what? he wants to choose. I think he wants to choose who his daughter is going to be with. And his daughter's Nobody, not like he's that. He's not going to choose anybody. Everybody has, he has a problem with everybody. Yeah, because if he did want to choose, he would have, like, while she was mourning for Teddy, he would have said, I got a guy for you that I want to introduce you to or something like that to help her get over it. He wasn't trying to do none of that. They were just locking her in the, in the freaking room. Well, Ernie, you begged to date, Ernie begged to date her and went to, his, to him for his blessing. And mm -hmm. he only used him to orchestrate following him around and getting, and getting that guy killed when he thought he killed Teddy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was gonna say, you know what part I really like? When he really thought the the, the feds was gonna take him, and they took her. Yes, he was. He whispered in my ear, "Call my lawyer." Well, my lawyer. He was ready to You're go, right. and, and then he was like, "Oh shit!" They take me off. <laughs> when they took me, I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. <laughs> oh, was oh. that was my oh shit moment for that night. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, they took her. 
Oh my goodness, oh. man. I'm clutching so, my pearls. Oh Lord. And you, and, you, and you got a lot of diamonds and pearls over there, little prince. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So, Miss K, now we're gonna switch a little bit of gears here. I want you to talk, tell us how you felt when Bumpy caught old French black dude, and we thought that he was gonna die because Bumpy has the two best day one men in crime boss history. They found his ass and right. drug him in there and was disappointed when Bumpy didn't kill him. But as always, Bumpy plays chess, they play checkers. Break down that situation for us. Yes. Yeah, so, of course, they were expecting Bumpy to do Bumpy things, right? But I really liked how he changed the game. He switched it up on them. And it's, it's, it's really good for them to see him switch it up, too, because they feel like, you know, it's never good to be um, predictable, you know, mm -hmm. but Bumpy, but, you know, Nat and Chance are very loyal. So he, he doesn't have to worry about that with them. But I was glad to see him switch it up because he was already feeling so down about killing the 10 Harlems. You know, he, he, these was guys that he worked for. And so, you know, I was, I really appreciated how he, instead of shooting first and then, well, he can't ask questions after he shoot them, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> <In a way. laughs> instead of just shooting him first because of how he betrayed him he found he wanted to know why and and I, I like that you know I was I was I thought that that was cool because he got to understand that it wasn't nothing personal it was just because the guy is looking from the outside the guy is looking at it like yo this man cannot be trusted he just killed all his friends pretty much and his partners and even if they weren't his friends they were his partners so what does that mean for me i have no safety here mm, so yeah. i really appreciated him finding out what was going on and then he was able to explain his side like look i couldn't trust those guys i didn't like killing them but i couldn't trust them and so he gave him a choice and that was kind of like their first test of trust mm -hmm. wow so. uh, man look whenever she come on this show it becomes very hard to go behind her so, Moochie, I'm going to let you slide on in her DMs after that great soliloquy she just gave. Oh, right now. <laughs> well, where are we now? Because I don't want to go too far ahead. Oh, we're, we're, talking, we're talking about Bumpy actually using French black dude instead of killing him. He had to. He, remember, like the guy said, Bumpy's a chess player. So he strategizes everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I like the way it was planned out. I love the way it was calculated. And he was off his game for a minute with the drinking because he got depressed. He got depressed because he had to kill all those dudes. Yeah. So he, he got depressed because the whole thing with the Tim Harlems is done. And it just, I think that kind of broke him for a minute. Then you got the judges and these other dudes that this I guess it's like a Mason thing he joined. The they they look like they betraying him and turning their backs on him oh. because he can't come through with the because he's not coming through with the money. They they now he realized even they supposed to be legal people and they they the biggest snakes always. So, always. I about the one dude. I think the one dude actually really likes Bumpy and the lawyer. Yeah, but the judge, looking out for him. The one. The, dude no, the, lawyer. Lawyer. I'm the lawyer. The judge. The lawyer was looking out for him. The lawyer was like, "This is nothing personal. It's business. It's in the contract." And I understood all of that. But the mm -hmm. judge, he was going to try to use his power to get at him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but see, and I, you I, already got your hands dirty. You can't do that. Right. Right. <laughs> and let, let me jump. Let me jump to Larry on that same part. So the judge and the banker was getting the hell on my nerves because yeah. they was they was they actually thought that they could intimidate. A street gangster, mm -hmm. like for real, bro. Yeah. Just because you went to law school, just because you became a big time banker, you on the bail of being legal. This oh. dude stacks bodies, and you think you're just gonna poke your chest out of him however you want to? Mm -hmm. It was good to me. Okay. At the I mean, very he end, he was ready to take out that razor, you know. <laughs> he really was. Speak on it, Larry. Speak on it, my brother. Yeah, I think it was just it, that part was sort of funny where it's just like, who does this dude think he is? I mean, it, it's like he's one of those guys that's so he's gotten so used to being like the big dog in the room that he doesn't realize that he's just the little puppy. 
you right. know, that mm-hmm. he that that it's one thing when you get into a room with real big dogs and this and, you know, you're in the room with Bumpy Johnson and the dude is just like, nah, son. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, he, he straight up nah, son. And when he was like, no, nah, I'm going to pay you six percent. The right. dude was like, it's 12. He was like, it was 12. It's six percent now. That's what it is. And. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was like you it, it's one of those things where you get put in such a position where you think you have power and someone reminds you, you only have the power that I allow you to have. And mm-hmm. I've just taken back half of that power when I just told you your 12 is going to six. And what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Me, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You know? And then nothing. he went over there. Nothing. Then he went to the bar with Sheree and had his <clears throat> ass a damn drink. That's what he was going to do. Right. That's what he right. did. So, Larry, I'm going to come to you with this, Larry, because this... <laughs> Larry, this was a big part of this episode, too, man. Can we talk about the crooked-ass nation and these two haters? These motherfuckers. Yes, man. Godly, man. man. So much so jealousy if, if we, and, and if, vitriol. If we're going to talk about, if we gonna talk about oh, these man. religious yeah. haters, we also got to talk about Oh boy, down here to um, what's his name? Um, the the captain, whatever the hell his name is, this dude right here, Larry. Right. Take that story wherever you want to go. Forgot his name, man. I was so disappointed in him. I mean, I'm not surprised, but I was so disappointed the way that he treated her at the end. I mean, I'm like, but you know I'm what, like, Larry? I was I was very satisfied in the way she behaved. Oh, absolutely. I think she really I think she really just showed him who she who she was and who he could have had. But ultimately, she probably he probably couldn't have handled a woman like her anyways. Like she said, you don't deserve a woman like me. Nope. And he doesn't. But he also not only does he not deserve her, he probably couldn't have handled her. No. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's really a shame that he went down, that it went down like that. And. I mean, it's, there's just so much jealousy and and just pettiness, and and part of me, part of me feels a certain way about these two for what they did. But at the same time, that was their job. That was their job was to look out for the people, to look out for the people in that mosque, and to look and to keep an eye on on her. And so they did their job. Their job was a crap job, and they shouldn't have been doing it. But that's what they were assigned to do, and they did it. But. I was really disappointed in that one dude because I'm like, you could have handled that situation better. I mean, this whole, this whole, every, the whole theme of this, this episode was honesty. It was, you know, Bumpy mm-hmm. saying it's just better, sometimes it's better to be honest. You know, uh, Stella said the same line at the end. She came in there wanting to be honest with him and tell him, I'm going to have to tell you the truth before we move forward. All the, and, you know, Betty telling her you can't start a, a marriage off, you know, with uh, with lies. You have to be honest and all. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it was just a shame partly because she never really got to be honest with the guy and come in. She tried to tell him, but before she got the words out, he started asking questions. And so I wonder if things would have been different in his eyes if he just would have stayed quiet for a moment and let her tell, you know, let her tell her truth. I wonder if he would have felt differently about her. So. Mm. Okay. I think he felt kind of bad afterwards, mm-hmm. but the words mm-hmm. already left his mouth. Yep. Miss yeah, Miss K, what did you feel? And he to... called her garbage, yo. He, yeah, yeah, he, and he the one that's garbage. He, he like, used to be friends with Malcolm. Garbage. Now, do y'all know who they said Omar is portraying in real life? Mm-hmm. Minister Farrakhan. But you ain't here really? for me. You ain't mm-hmm. here for me. Oh my you ain't here for me. Miss K, take the wheel. How'd you That's feel why about they made, the situation? They made them dark, too. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah. Well, how I felt about this is, um, first, I just want to say uh, with Larry, what you said that um, Brother Henry and Sister Marnie are just doing their job. I can respect that, but I never feel like you have to do your job the way they're doing it. You know, if you're there to protect, you want to make sure that you weed out all the enemies or whatever you want to call them. But they are just some straight haters, though. They got a lot of hate in their heart. So it's just like they're miserable, too, at the same time. So I don't feel like it's just about their job. They got, yo, you see how bad Henry hates Malcolm? Like, he's itching. Yeah, he's itching to kill that man. But check this out. Henry Henry hates Malcolm, right? But this chick... 
This okay. chick hates Elise right. because she likes Malcolm. Mm. And you Malcolm didn't. Oh, look, Moochie. Moochie. <laughs> Moochie. What? You know? Listen, she <laughs> just not want her. They're just. Malcolm they're doesn't just... want anyone. If you see the way Malcolm looks at Betty, no, I, no nobody has a shot. Right. No one. But the thing is, look, so back to them, they're sitting over there having a good old time and these two over here plotting. And I'm just like, this is so sad. Like their lives are so miserable. But, you know, what I was hoping was for Elise to get to um, Omar before they did. And that's what I think would have made a difference. I don't think it would have made a difference if, um, you know, her getting there too late, like if he would have if he would have waited and let her talk, I don't think it would have made a difference because it came to him already. You know, it was, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, he already felt like he was duped. You know, you know, obviously they probably put a whole bunch of bad stuff in his ear about her. So yeah, I think she, the only way it would have worked out is if she would have got there first. They already had it that she was messing around with Malcolm. They said that. Yeah. I, w- I was just thinking, um, you know, I know you guys were saying that this was supposed to maybe be fin- Mr. Farrakhan, but I think it might have been like um, not Farrakhan, the other dude that's in power now or was in power right before. Because wasn't there another guy between Farrakhan and, and Elijah Muhammad? Wasn't there another dude? Uh, no. I-, I would have to check on that. I-, I thought it went from Muhammad to Farrakhan. Maybe it I did. Be- I don't know. I don't no, I- I would have- I'm going to check right. on that. But. Mooch, I'm gonna swing it. I'm gonna swing it your way, Mooch. All right. I know that we, as older adults, it don't take us as long to know that we want to be with someone and lock them down and marry them. But don't you think he was rather quick? I mean, this nigga went to one lunch yeah. <laughs> where you said where you said Ernie got to smell Stella draws. He ain't smelled nothing but her breath after drinking water, oh and he already God. talking about he want to propose. Moochie, take the wheel, man. Help me out here on this. <laughs> Do y'all feel like he was doing that to, to, to be conniving? But I don't think so. I think he really was into her. I think he was I into think her, he too. was really into her. Um, they don't really date the way they do. They usually just court for a little bit, and then they get married. Because okay. remember, that's how um Malcolm and Betty got married. I'm, I'm going by the book and stuff like that, by the autobiography. They just... She he just met her, walked, you know, went on a couple of dates, and then pretty soon after that, they was married. Yeah, as my okay. wife would say, he had his marriage light on. Right, you know? right. Yeah, and <laughs> he was, yeah, he, he had ready. the red light on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I can see that. So, well, let me ask you. Let me ask you guys this, and I'll come back to you, Larry. Where do you think they're going to go with the nation now? I mean, we do know how the story ends, but mm-hmm. how do you think they're going to portray it? in this story with Omar being the former best friend of Malcolm. He knows, he knows that the nation has been infiltrated by Elise and you still got these two haters willing to do anything sat religious to preserve their religion. Yeah, I think, um, I think this, I think, I don't, I don't think that Malcolm's getting killed this season. I know the next episode, I think is the last episode of the season. Right. Um, but I think I think it's going to lead up to major tension leading to that. And then I think next season he'll probably get killed sometime on the next season. And the, and the nation from there, it's going to be sort of how things devolve in inside the nation, because things sort of were in a bit of a disarray after Malcolm was killed. And yep. mm-hmm. and so. I think uh, I think they'll probably deal with that some. They'll probably have a little bit of fallout with you know Bumpy. will probably be a little bit of a a little bit uh, you know in disarray because I mean Malcolm is just sort of his therapist in a lot of ways. When he needs something, that's where he goes and talks to him. And even though he's always giving him grief about not um, about not lecturing him, that's the reason why he shows up because he wants to get lectured to. He wants to he wants someone that's going to actually tell him the truth about himself. Right. So. And I've, Larry, I've completely enjoyed when those two are on the screen together. Oh, Man, yeah. it, that has been some must-see TV. Um, I'm going to kick it back to you, Miss K. What the hell is our boy Adam Clayton Powell 
Senator Powell, <laughs> what is he doing in D.C. and why is he not on our TV screen? I don't know what. <laughs> I was, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, listen, this guy is either he had COVID a few times or he is scared to work in this pandemic because I just could not understand. Like, where is he? <laughs> he hasn't been on any of the episodes? He's now, been on like one. Not this, not this, um, not after That's the season. second half of the season. Right, not right. the second half, but second he's going to be, I think, on next week, though. Mm -hmm. He's going to be on next week. But maybe they just didn't have anything, you know, for him, it, it, you know, as far as the storyline goes. Well, when yeah, the uh, when, only thing I could see him talking to Morgan all again. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, and and let me ask you guys this, and I'll come back to you for this one, Mooch, and then we'll bounce to Larry. What do you think is going to ultimately happen to Morgan Thaw? Mm. I feel like he's going to end up getting somebody in the mob. Hmm. Looking like Screech from Saved by the Bell. He gonna get somebody. Oh wow! Else? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look. He doesn't look quite as cool as he uh, does with the leather jacket on and all that. No, he 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 doesn't look cool when you strip him of his power. He don't look all that cool. <laughs> and, you know? and so, so Larry, let's talk about this guy right here. That your boy Bumpy saved. This is Bumpy's yeah. right hand man. Bumpy did a bid in prison in real life and on this show for this man right here. Mm. He went to this man, but at first he did call Chin to let Chin know what Banana was planning. Mm -hmm. right? And Chin just said, the hell with you, I'm done with you. You, you make right. me sick, okay? Yeah. But it was funny to me, when he put that phone down, Bumpy was laughing because he knew he, he knew that the chicken was gonna come home to roost. Yeah. <laughs> he goes and plays chess with his right hand man. Larry, did you think that his right hand man right here was going to show up at that event, or did you think he was really going to take Bumpy's advice and stay home? No, I thought he was going to take Bumpy's advice and stay home. Okay. okay. Because this dude, this dude pushes back against the, against the families all the time. Like, they don't want – they didn't even want to deal with Bumpy, but this dude was like, nah, Bumpy's the real deal. He's a stand-up dude, and, and this dude vouches for him, you know? Mm -hmm. And Bumpy – I mean, Bumpy came to him just straight up like – forget – he was like, forget all the gangster stuff. He was like, you're my friend, and I love you. The dude yeah. said the words out right. He was like, I love you. Yeah. He was like, mm -hmm. he was like, call in sick. He was like, he was like, <laughs> take the day off. Don't show up, you know? Dale, he, Larry, he act like he working at Amazon or Google or somewhere. Damn, he just, <laughs> call the fucking, just call in. Just call in. I got a headache, and it won't go away. You know? <laughs> He's a gangster. Uh, what the, who you calling? Exactly. Right? Come exactly. On. So it, I mean, that was that was kind of funny. But I, I think that I think when dude was like, yeah, OK. And I'll tell you the thing that really shocked me. Are we talking about the whole scene with the with the anywhere you want to go, brother? Anywhere. So, so the thing that really got me that shocked me was when uh, Masur 98 pulled that pulled that uh, that Ruger and just straight blasted dudes. I, was, I didn't see that in him. I mean, I, I mean, saw the dude like he was the sharp suit dude that makes the deals, but he's not the dude that's gonna pull the trigger. That dude came out real quick, was like blah blah, and and I was like, oh snap, this dude is like a real G, you know. Well, well Larry, anytime your life is on the line, you might be surprised what you would do. Yeah, but that dude did it so smooth and so just like he did it like he had done it before. Well, look, was, who it, used, look who he used to hang with. This used to be his number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, wow. Moochie, yeah. jump on in there. With this, I, I I wasn't surprised that he shot him because now that he knows that the brothers is behind him, he's like, I got, all right, I got to put in work. That's that's how I saw it. But yeah, see, yeah. what, what I know Larry the said, is behind me, I got to put in work. I, 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 <laughs> feel, I feel what Larry is saying because he's been, um, let me get Frenchy. He's been dapping near the whole entire time we've seen. Yeah. Him. He's been very dapping near, you know, one of them black dudes that wear um handkerchiefs in their suit and shit like that. <laughs> He's been one of them type of dudes. And so, uh, Miss Kay, I want you to jump in there. Talk to me about that whole entire scene in Coney Island. At the, oh, the I, whole, you know, 
I love, listen, of course, being from Brooklyn, I was definitely loving seeing Coney Allen. <laughs> oh, Lord. All y'all New York women. Then, what, what, what is we going to do with these New York women, Larry? Oh, no, Larry. He was eating, looked like he was eating frog legs, right? Oh, I didn't see oh. that. Yeah, it looked like, um... Um, but not was eating frog legs. Wow. <laughs> but the, fact, the thing I liked was the fact that he had the snipers on the cyclone. I was like, Oh my lord! Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but how you gonna do that? You yeah. he had this, he had him on the cyclone. He had him on the roller coaster. Yeah. I think I think I even seen one behind the clown with a gun. What in the yeah, world? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, uh, another thing that I noticed about this, and I liked. Was that there was some type of uh, role reversal? I'm sorry. Oh gosh, let me go with this again. <laughs> you mm. good? All right. I don't know, guys. Hang um, up. Can you hear me still, though? Yeah, yeah we, we can. can. Yeah, we can. We can. Right. Okay. So remember how after um, 98 shot the guy, right? He shot the guys, I mean. Then here comes Bumpy around the clown. Comes from around that clown, and he says, oh, the Frenchman, he wants to play with me instead. I love how they switched that around. It was like role reversal, because in the beginning of the episode, Bonanno did that. He mm -hmm. came mm -hmm. The Frenchman doesn't want to work with you anymore, so this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. I just like that yeah. whole switch around, the switcheroo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Moochie. <laughs> Talk to me. You you a New York girl at heart. You still live there. Talk to us about that Coney Island scene. Well, I like the whole thing that they was on the cyclone. I liked it. Like <laughs> I said, it looked like he was eating frog legs because you know that that's what they famous for. And Nathan's. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> and Nathan's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <my> God. <laughs> so, Larry, I'm going to bounce back to you. When, when Bumpy rolled out there with the gun to the back of the head, Mm. A banano. Mm -hmm. Did you see how Chin basically still said, I want to hear it from you, not from Bumpy? Take it away, Larry. What do you think was going through um, Chin's head? He know that when it comes to this money, Bumpy don't play. I mean, has, you know, so what would you think was Chin was thinking? I Honestly, I think that, <clears throat> I think in that moment, I mean, it might have been a little bit of an insult to Bumpy, just sort of like, I don't believe you, nigga, and I want to hear it from the white dude. But I also I also think it was a large part where it was sort of like, I want to kill this dude. Like, we know Chen has been wanting to kill Bonanno for a long time, and he's mm -hmm. like, I think he was like, I want to kill this dude, and if I hear it from his mouth with all the families behind me that I would need to get permission from, I could do it. I could do it right now with the exception of the snipers up on the roof, that's going to be a little problem. But he was like, I, I think he was just like, let it be heard. Let, let, let the, let the fan. And I think the other part too, is like chin knows that if, if, if Bonanno says, yeah, this is what I did, that he's going to, that's going to put, that's going to put chin as sort of in a leadership position amongst all the other families. Cause he was telling the other families before that Bonanno couldn't really be trusted, you mm -hmm. know? And now mm -hmm. the dude that that no one wanted to work with, which is, and Bumpy, and Chin was the only one that really worked with them. Now if Bumpy's the one that went and rescued their dope, and you know, and is is bringing a deal to him and, and exposing their their guy is dirty. All of a sudden, Chin can sort of take credit for that and be like, "Yo, this was me. This was because I worked with this dude. You guys didn't want anything to do with that. We got this plot unfold, you know, unfoiled. So or foiled. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's. There, it, there's a lot going on there, and it could go either way. But I, I somehow I don't think Bonanno's just gonna just quietly go out and leave New York and and, and be gone. I mean, I feel Thank like you. I Thank feel you. like they should have put him in a car and drove him away somewhere and just took him out. You I, know? I do too. Yeah. I do too. Um, with this whole thing too, with um, with you got to remember, Jacante Chin, he worked with with Bumpy, so he sees he's a straight up guy with money. He, he, Mm -hmm. he's, he's good. He is. If we making money, everything gets along. Their partnership diffused because of other people in their circle, mm -hmm. and it, it had nothing to do with them two not getting along. Them two doing. Man, they were getting along together. like fat cats hanging along. out at the Geechee. Exactly. Right. And right. He, I think they he was kind of sorry that that partnership ended because they was making good money. Yeah. Yeah. They was making good yeah. money, and now the guy that. that 
killed the, that girl that was with Chance, he's not alive anymore either. Mm -hmm. So now they can go back to business and everything will be copacetic. Oh, well, yeah, they're going back to business, but guess what? Bumpy's at the head of everything because he controls the connection now. And well, I, I that's, just his, love, that's his fault. I just love the way he put it on chin. It's like, um, yeah, you about to pay for this all over again. Mm -hmm. um, right. <laughs> it took his money. He had to blow up that money. Well, that's what he, he had to they do. Didn't blow he had it to all do. up. <laughs> Look, money is money. Wouldn't you want it back? No, I would. I'm just saying he didn't no, blow up all that money because they they packed they packed the bottom of that crate with with explosives and just put a top layer on a, a money. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. care. They was checking it, so they saw it was bills there. I'm just you know. <laughs> but, but, but somebody, even a rich person, going penny pinch. He want every last dollar that went up in smoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we do know that rich people penny pinch now. Them folks in Hollywood don't want to pay for nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. You hear me? <laughs> so, Miss K, I want to, I want to get some predictions. Where do you think we're going to go in the next episode? Um, uh, hmm, the next episode. That's. That's hard for me because, you know, I tried to even look at a trailer and I did not see any trailer for next week's episode. So I couldn't even, up. I couldn't even tell you. I tried to when I clicked on it, it showed me the trailer for the whole season. So I couldn't see it. But I wanted to talk. I wanted to mention something that's I think someone named Richard. I hope mm -hmm. I got him right in the chat. He said that um, Chin admitted to killing Banano's son in front of everybody. Right. And that is a problem. And it, and it just goes to show that Chin is an oath breaker. So we don't know how the other families are going to take this and what they're going to, you know, do with this, right? Is so, was Bonanno's son made? No, but you're not, you're not supposed to touch. You're not supposed to touch family. Yeah. So, and there's another reason why they couldn't just kill Bonanno because he's a made man. He's not just a made man. He's a boss. So that's mm. really, that would really be a problem. And so mm. Bob knew better not to kill um banano because then you got the whole five families that he would never be able to just walk you saw how you saw the hard time he had in the beginning of the half season where he had to be you know just dodging in and out of cars and you know just the way you know he had to have his right. own snipers for just to pull up to the the geechee or whatever so he don't want to live like that so that yeah. was that was his best move so far but we know uh that banano is not gonna take this lying down so no and so that, that brings me back to Larry's point. In real life, there was two attempts on Bumpy's wife. So, Larry, do you think we're going to see an attempt in a kidnapping on Bumpy's hot um, TV wife? <laughs> um, we might. But if we do, see, here's the thing I think that people have to understand about Mamie. Mamie doesn't come from much. And Mamie mm -hmm. dealt with some hard stuff in her life, as she talked about before. I don't think Mamie's to be toyed with. I think if you come at Mamie and you don't get her, she might end up clipping. She might end up clipping you. Mm. You know. You think like she, she that always tough. got that nice little cute clutch in there, which might carry a nice little thirty-two. She might just pop a cap in your ass. <laughs> you know. Mm. Okay, Mamie. Okay. Okay, okay. okay, Mamie. Okay. I mean, you can't. You can't be. Picture. You can't be with a gangster like that and not have a little gangster in you. True. Okay. Well, so somebody said that he violated the oath when he killed Bonanno's son, right? Yeah, he didn't violate the oath when he killed Bonanno's son. He violated when he killed his own man's and them. When when well, he was Bonanno violated the oath, he was going off all of them. So everybody he looks violated. The, looks the worst out of all of them, and they already looked down to um Chin anyway. They yeah. thought he was nothing but a driver. Right, right. Mm -hmm. At least at least Ernie hasn't violated his oath yet. Oh, Ernie violated the oath of messing with somebody's daughter. That's yeah. the no, no, no. He married wow. her. He married her. <laughs> I, I think right. I think it's gonna be. <laughs> I got For some one. reason I think they're gonna have a big wedding. I got what? one prediction possibly. Okay, go for it, Miss K. Maybe we're gonna be introduced. I don't know. I don't know if I want to say that. Maybe this is too soon, but I think it would be smart if they introduce um, some of the men from the mosque over in Newark. The oh, ones, yeah. Oh. yeah, the ones that are gonna actually kill. Malcolm, I think that would be smart to do it. Who is they from Temple Number Seven, right? I don't remember the number, but I know they were out of Newark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I, I you know, I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Mucha. Can we? Can I we thought that when they brought him okay. in, that he was from there, but then somebody said Boston. Mm. 
I just wanted to say, uh, Kenya said he killed that Ernie killed a made man, but Ernie wasn't um, Ernie wasn't made when he killed him. Mm -hmm. So he hadn't taken the oath yet. He hadn't violated his oath because he hadn't taken it yet. It doesn't but matter anyway because Ten killed him. Ernie, Ten Ernie, the other guy. That's their secret. Ernie is not allowed to kill to touch a made man, regardless. Even if he didn't take the oath yet, he's not allowed to do that. That's no, I know he's not allowed, that, but I'm just saying he know. didn't break an oath because he hadn't taken oh. an oath. You can't break it until you take it. And okay, so I, I was just saying he hadn't broken it. He hadn't broken his oath yet. He, or I hope he doesn't break it, but okay. he hasn't broken his oath. I got mm -hmm. you. I thought you were saying something else. Mm, uh, okay. Wow. Larry, you got any hot takes on what you think is going to happen next week on the finale? Um, I think we are going to probably see, uh, I think we're going to see probably Morgenthal get a little bit, um, maybe a little unhinged where he might start, start playing fast and loose with the rules a little bit because, um, oh, what happened to Lamont? Did he dip out? Uh -oh. <laughs> he still got to be here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he gets on. I think he clicked himself out somehow. There he is. back. <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> 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 well, um, what were you saying about Morgenthal? Yeah, I was going to say I think I think I think we might see Morgenthal start playing a little fast and loose because I think we're going to see um, Adam Clayton Powell back, who's going to put a little pressure on him to back off of stuff, you mm. know. Mm -hmm. And I think when he does, I think we're going to start seeing Morgenthal get a little bit more aggressive and start thinking he needs to finish, you know, close this out sooner than later. And I think he might start being a bit more aggressive and maybe being a little bit fast and loose with the rules and and. And so I, I think we're going to see a little bit. We're going to see a little bit of a different dynamic from him and the way they handle this case. And they sort of alluded to it a little bit when Bumpy went and was talking to the lawyers and the judge and them, the banker, and was saying, you know, I'm not paying you six or twelve percent. That was when you thought Morgenthal was after me, and that's you know that was that's not your business. That's something you know whatever. He was he. I forgot exactly what he said, but he alluded to something like Morgenthal's not going to be a problem anymore. And I mm -hmm. think that's because Adam Clayton Powell is going to come back from D.C. and put a little kibosh on it. Mm -hmm. so. Moochie, give me your hot take for next episode. I'm going to go with Young Non Slim. He said Malcolm House going to get burnt down. I think they, that's when they're going to bond the house. Oh, I like that. If we want to schedule with, with, him, with him getting assassinated, remember, he gets assassinated in February. It looked like it's warm. Uh, uh, it's, they bringing out fur coats and all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping I'm I was saying he might end up getting killed in the finale, but it's not built up enough to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, go, I feel like we're gonna see it kind of coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't he go and, to Mecca before that too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I think I think that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, he I mean, has to go on the Hajj. He has to go to Egypt, and then he has to come back and actually form his own organization. Because right exactly. now he hasn't formed yeah, it yet. Yeah, so all right. of that didn't happen. So right. we we got more time with Malcolm. Oh, I yes. think that's gonna happen. I think that's gonna happen probably because they're only on what season two right now. Season two, that's it. So I I think what they're gonna do. I don't know how they're gonna run this for a full five seasons if they're trying to do it for a five, so they can get into syndication. But I think they'll probably run Malcolm's story all next season. Mm -hmm. And it'll probably end up with a finale with Malcolm getting getting assassinated. And then after that, it's going to be the next season's probably going to be how Bumpy living without his his, you know, his conscience in some sense mm -hmm. with Malcolm being his conscience, dealing with the, the fallout of Malcolm's assassination. I think all that stuff is for because we all know that that Bumpy's organization just sort of collapses in on itself. So <clears throat> at, at some point we're going to have to see that happen. And I think all that may come in like season four i think season three is all gonna be about malcolm and and you know ending with him getting assassinated season four will be about the downfall of uh bumpy and then i don't know what they would do for a season five Word. the only thing i can think well, of well, is he they, doesn't they go bring to jail in. again you gotta remember to um break lucas probably i want to know if he's gonna come in well, that's what I was thinking. Maybe that would be season five is when they bring in somebody new and it maybe mm -hmm. it's frank lucas they bring in for season five because remember they was talking about continuing the story with Frank Lucas. They was right. talking about that last year. So, so maybe he's still in the 60s. Right, right. Right. So you got to get all the way to there. So the, the only hot take I got is these two are going to wind up coming back together and doing something to help. That's all I got. That's all I got. Mm. These two are <laughs> going to come huh? back. They're going to they're going to have to come back and hook up and put some put some kiboshes on some things. That's all I got for y'all on that end. 
Um, to that regard, I will say to my good people. Um, but did we see? Uh, did we see? Uh, what's her name? Uh, what's Bumpy's daughter's name again? Elise. Yeah. Did we see Elise show up at Betty's door with the press and curl? Yeah. 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 And, and she was. And I was so she glad was so to see her funny. out of that outfit. I was oh, just like, and and to be honest with you, that was one of the most touching moments of this entire season when all three of them was embracing each other. That was just a very touching moment. And um, my thing I, is this: Do you think that she really wanted to marry him, or she was just happy to be chosen? I mean, I maybe think she might both. Want, I, I yeah, think I think she, it could have been both. Yeah, I think she was she was trying to take a chance on love because she knew that she couldn't have Malcolm. So. Mm -hmm. She found somebody, and I think she was willing to fall in love with him. And it's yeah. funny because Malcolm knows that that she feels that way. It's obvious. I think Betty even knows, and he was. Mm -hmm. That's why I was telling her: if you have the opportunity to find happiness, you should seize upon it. You should you should find all the happiness that you can find in life because you're not getting any of it over here. I mean, that's really what he was saying. And Betty was sort of you saw her reach over and hold his hand uh -huh. like this Negro is mine. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. She Betty Shabazz ain't playing. She sure did. She's She's like, oh, yeah. yeah, this this one is mine right here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got 104. Can we get 104 likes? But can we also get 104 new subscribers to Miss K's channel, to Muchella's channel, to Larry's channel? Links are all in description. To your channel. Uh, me, too. yeah, me, Muchella, and Miss K are gonna come back to just kind of round table. A little bit of what's been going on with power tomorrow and then we'll have larry back with the whole crew on wednesday night and i don't know what we're going to talk about wednesday night it's going to be hot though i don't, I don't know, know what man. it is Maybe but it's going to be start fire. talking about heels man. you watched it i watched I did. it i watched it too <laughs> i like it i like it but i got i got to finish this last episode and then i think i might i might try to put that on the table too but um I have to juggle y'all because I'm still trying to do the financial channel too. But right. Larry wants to cover billions. So I want you yeah. guys to leave me comments. Which would you rather see reviewed? Billions or the new show on stars called Heels? And then Black Mafia Family is getting ready to come out. We've got to talk about yeah. that. That's going to be big. Um, there's some news that just came out today about um, Power Book 4 with Tom. Um, some people they added to the cast. So Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring you guys fire, special guests left and right. Just stay tuned. That's going to do with this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Subscribe to everybody's channel. All their links are in the video description. And until that next Sexy as Hell video, which will be tomorrow night at 9, I'll see you. Peace.